All right. So, hi, everyone. We're here to talk about self-serve to the rescue. Many of you have are in different stages of uh, adopting self-serve, of your self-serve journey. Uh, we have Brooke from the Atlantic, Dave Rowley, who now has his own company, Bootleg, uh, formerly at Advanced Local, Allison Lombrosa from TripAdvisor, Grant Cohen from Roku. Um, so, guys, I guess what I want to first know is what problem were you trying to solve uh, when you first looked at uh, bringing in self-serve as an option? Uh, Brooke, I'd like to talk to you because you're, you're really new in this journey. So I'd like to talk to you about that. So we're just currently at the onboarding stage. And one of the problems we're really trying to solve for is resource management. We want to make sure that the sales team is freed up to think about larger partnerships and larger deals and isn't bogged down with smaller deal sizes. And um, we also want to be able to create some automation so that you don't have as many people required internally to turn around these deals. Right. And David, what 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 was it like for you guys? Yeah, I would say I would say it's the same for for us, similar to uh, Brooke at the Atlantic. I mean, the main problems we're really trying to solve uh, for ways to maintain all of our uh, low spend advertisers, of which you know, given the fact that Advanced Local is very much focused uh, focused on small and medium sized businesses. Uh, that we do have a lot of uh, advertisers that do have smaller spends. Um, so being able to maintain that revenue, uh, but also give us a new opportunity to uh, outreach to new, uh, I guess, micro spend advertisers that our sales force uh, can effectively reach. Right. Uh, and uh, David and Allison, I mean, not David, sorry, Grant and Allison, you guys are a little more further in, in your journey. So I'm kind of curious. Um, exactly what stage are you at how are you using self-serve and can you talk about the options with self-serve to save a publisher money uh Grant? Yeah. yeah sure um i think you know for us our use case is a little less about saving and more about being able to offer distribution to a much wider array of our partners so if you think about roku as a streaming platform there are thousands of channels uh, on the on the platform Obviously, the biggest ones are the ones that are most popular that folks know, right? The Disney Pluses and Hulus and Netflixes of the world. Um, and we work very closely with them to help provide distribution on that platform from paid media and other tactics uh, within our endemic media suite uh, that lives you know, within the user experience on the platform. But we don't want to ignore those thousands of long tail. It just isn't physically possible to work with each one of those on a managed service basis to, um, to deliver the type of uh, campaign opportunities uh, that we should. So we rolled out our first version of a self-serve solution a few years ago, uh, and then very recently worked with Dan Eds to build uh, an updated version that I think is um, has a lot more features, bells and whistles. The streaming market in particular that we work in has evolved quite a lot and become much more advanced from a media perspective, audience targeting, segmentation, creative, all that. Uh, and so I think this is, for us, the tool is uh, really a, a, a way for us to provide a scaled opportunity for all the longer tail publishers on our platform uh, to really get distribution and uh, reach amongst our, our uh, install base of Roku device users. Uh, thank you, Grant. Allison, I'm so sorry we can't see you, but if you could talk to us about how TripAdvisor is using it, because I know you guys are doing some really creative and interesting things with self-serve, um, and then talk about the like kind of revenue opportunities in the medium to long term. Yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we yep. can okay, hear so you. The microphone just, works. Uh, yeah. At least there's that. Uh, apologies for the video complications, but um, you know, very similar to what I think you know, the, everyone has spoken to that we are really solving for our sales teams uh, bandwidth and focus, as well as creating you know business and operational efficiencies. You know, so instead of sidelining um, revenue potential from smaller accounts really being able to expand um, and not be roadblocked from the minimums that we have and put in place. And, you know, we were talking about long-term revenue, long tail revenue that really can um, in aggregate be material um, and not being, you know, being able to bring on Dan ads as an opportunity to, you know, take advantage of that and allow for brands and advertisers to tap into, you know, our audience as well, right? And we know how valuable that is. 
Um, you know, this is actually, we started probably about a year and a half ago with Dan Ads, um, but it actually wasn't our first attempt into self-serve. Um, you know, to be transparent, you know, this was actually our second attempt and the first one really didn't meet our expectations and for a myriad of reasons, but, you know, I think Dan Ads really was able to, to work with us, hear those learnings and think about the long-term um, success and adoption within the marketplace for self-serve. Thanks, Allison. I think one of the main things that people think, publishers think happens or sales teams thinks happens once self-serve comes along is that there's no need for the sales team anymore. Is this true or is this a myth? I mean, we're still at the onboarding stage, like I said, but I think that it's definitely the opposite of the truth. One thing that yeah. we worked hard to do was to evangelize this with upper sales management. And when we roll it out to the sales team, they should really see it as a tool by which they can push certain deals and partnerships that they don't have the time to manage so that they can focus on building larger parts of the business. And also the opportunity for us to attract deal sizes that are below our minimum that they may not have to work on, but could, if it's still a partner in their account list, they would still get paid from. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'd say from the Roku side, similar experience. Um, it certainly is not designed to be a replacement for sales and account management. It's designed to be a tool to enable better scale of sales and account management, right? Um, where in terms of total throughput of accounts uh, and ideally combined revenue, uh, you're able to create a system where they're still a highly integral part uh, of the process of, you know, identifying customers, helping to onboard them, train them, stay, you know, keep them up to speed on the latest uh, opportunities in the tool, but where they aren't having to literally manage service deliver uh, any and all campaigns. Uh, so uh, a single salesperson, a single account management group, you working with clients who use our self-serve tool can manage far more than you could without said tool uh, in place. Okay. And um, we're bringing Allison back because I know she has something to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm back. I'll just go without video. Um, yeah, I would agree. It's definitely um, a myth. Uh, you know, I think for the existing sales team that we had in place, it really allowed them to expand their relationships across, you know, the biggest opportunities for growth and revenue. Um, and then, you know, we also brought on, I think, you know, it's a myth also because self-service still has hands that touch it. Um, yep. So as much as it's still self-service, we have a dedicated sales team who is out promoting what our what we call TripAdvisor Media Manager, which is our self-service platform. Um, you know, they're out there and they're talking to clients and they're educating them and empowering them to go on the platform to make their own advertising decisions and buys. Um, so it's definitely not a removal of sales, I think it's just uh, expanding and changing what that remit looks like. Right. So, I mean, I think it's something Grant uh, wasn't able to touch on. Maybe you or Allison about like it saves the publisher money, right? By by ad adopting self serve, doesn't it? Like because of the workflow changes and and the collaboration and so on. Can can you speak to how it saves the publisher money at all? Hello, Allison. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to, to, to mention it. I, for us, it was, like I said, it was less about a savings and more about an incremental yeah. opportunity, <laughs> which I think is the case for most of them. I, I think there is some level of savings to it, but I suspect most people who are investing in self-serve um, aren't doing it to reduce their existing costs, but are doing it to create net new opportunity that ha may have a better margin to it. So in, in essence, it's a savings moving forward, but I suspect gotcha. that's how the case for most of the people involved here. Got you. Okay. I, yeah, I was having some issues. I, I'd say I 100% I echo that. I think, um, like, again, you still have resources, but it, it does create efficiencies. It streamlines and allows for focus. Um, so it allows you to prioritize, which is, I think, um, critical, right, during this past year is really having that ruthless prioritization. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, that's what we're expecting out of it also. We're not expecting to save money, but we are expecting to streamline processes and create new opportunities that weren't there before. Okay. All right. But I mean, and ultimately that saves money, right? I mean, maybe we can't quantify it, right? But um, it's, 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 you know, something. Um, so I think Grant, you already touched on the way in which sales was involved in your, uh, your processes. 
Um, how, how can, what are best practices for working with sales? What are some of your best uh, practices? Yeah, I think um, the key to me with self-serve, unlike our, uh, our more managed service business, um, is I think really focusing on onboarding and support documentation uh, uh, for the clients, right? Because there's they're not going to there's not going to be a, a layer of, as much of a layer of managed service doing it. So you got to be able to give them the tools to do it themselves, um, creating a really kind of simplified interface that makes sense for the type of audience you're going after. So, for example, within our business, we actually have two different types of self serve. We have one view, which is a, a DSP that I view as like the Bloomberg terminal uh, of utilizing Roku Media, right? It's really designed for professional programmatic traders who buy large amounts of media and can take on sort of a heavier piece of machinery, if you will, to really do advanced media buying. Then we have our ads manager, which is the ad manager, which is the tool that we worked with Dan Ads on, that's really designed for more of a long tail publisher on our platform to do a, a more lightweight, that's our E-Trade, right? So um, the simpler tool, if you will, that is better designed from a UX perspective, a support perspective, feature perspective, for that specific audience. So I think as you work with the sales team, it's identifying what type of clients fit with what type of self-serve solution and then creating marketing, product marketing support materials that really help that client be as self-service as possible or self-sufficient as possible to, to make that onboarding as seamless as possible. Okay, Brooke, I see you shaking your head. So I'm curious also because you're new in this game. Yeah what the onboarding process was like for you, how long this took? Um, we're almost finished, so we haven't quite completed it, but um, it was really fairly simple, just touching base with PO and the implementation team to go through what our existing ad flow is in DFP, GAM, um, and then also working with an account manager and the marketing side to figure out how we want to best roll this out to our internal teams and also externally. Right, David, that, was that the same for you with your onboarding process? Yeah, I, I would definitely echo that. So the actual, I think, technical or technological side of setting up the self-serve channel is probably the easier side of it. Uh, and and you know, the everyone at the on the Dan Ads team really is super helpful in that regard um really just you know bucketed bulleted list of what you need to accomplish and you know from a project perspective it was fantastic um the i think the more difficult um approach to self-serve is the go-to-market strategy um yeah you know, is is making sure because you know if you can build it they will come does not apply um, <laughs> able to tell users you need to be able to figure out how you're going to acquire users and then activate them on the channel to make sure that they actually transact and for us that's that's actually the hardest that that's been the hardest thing so far okay yeah and i would i would say one of those areas as well as you know like grant talked about uh i believe like training documentation and, and support materials and that i think has been a big piece of the onboarding is you know, we've talked about that there's always going to be hands and resources that are dedicated with it, but how can you set it up for success from the get go? Um, and, you know, we have a how to guide, we've done video tutorials, we have creative best practices and FAQs. Dan Ads has allowed us to have like an online chat functionality, mm -hmm. um, you know, welcome emails, our team does webinars and even one to one client demos when needed. So. I think you know building that into the upfront strategy um, and making that all available um, has really helped ease the transition and also the adoption from clients. Okay, with that in mind, um, again, I'm going back to Allison and Grant because they're further along here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> do you guys have any advice for pubs looking to do this? Like, what should they be looking out for? Um, you know, I think we said it before. Um, like it's not a set it and forget it. Um, so be prepared to have a strategy to have, make sure that you have a level of internal support and communications um, in place, both internally and externally. Um, I'd also say that, you know, be pretty open-minded and look at, you know, I think we've seen some strategies that presented themselves after launch that we weren't necessarily thinking of as a use case prior to that. Um, so, you know, I, I definitely would say kind of keeping a close eye on the analytics, the feedback in the marketplace, 
But I, I think one of the biggest things is what we realized from starting it from the very beginning to we've seen, you know, triple, triple digit growth in the last two quarters alone, obviously that a part of that is a readiness in the marketplace. Um, but a lot of that has to do with the level of uh, service that we've been putting attached to the TripAdvisor Media Manager. So I think it is that idea of amplifying your message, um, having big mailers, doing webinars, and really having a marketing plan for it for yourself as well. Okay, hey, thank you, yeah. Allison Grant. Yeah, I'd say for, for ours, I think you know we're lucky, if you will, that the client base that we initially focused on for um, this version of our self-serve tool is our endemic partners. So they're kind of already built in, already partners, already on the platform. Um, and there's you know, an existing appetite for this. Uh, so for us, it was really about talking to them, listening to them, understanding what are the features. I mentioned we had a legacy product, um, but understanding what were the features that were that were missing from that, that they really wanted. We did a beta program for this the end of last year before we launched it uh, at uh, full scale um, and really used the insights and input from that to say, okay, here's the features that should be in here. How do we bake that into the roadmap for the self-serve tool um, so that we have something that's good enough now and will continue to get even better uh, over time for them. So I think really understanding your customer segment um, and hearing them, listening to them and getting a good feel for what those key features are and then making sure that you have appropriately built them into your plan and then added on, as I mentioned before, the right level of support documentation and information around how to utilize said features, making it as turnkey as possible uh, is what we've seen you know, be a successful formula. Okay. Brooke, did you learn anything from that? <laughs> yes. I did. Sorry, I was on mute because it's very windy where I'm sitting. Um, yes, I did. I think okay. that that's helpful advice. And I'm glad that we were able to be on the panel with two people who have fully onboarded and had a significant time using the platform. Uh, so I was definitely listening. <laughs> All right, good. All right, so guys, I think we are at time. I'm getting a buzzer in my ear here. Um, so I thank you all. David, thank you. Grant, thank you. Brooke, thank you. Allison, thank you. I'm sorry we couldn't get the camera resolved, but you provided us with such great information. Thank you all. See you around soon. Thanks, Lynn. Thank you, Thanks everyone. everyone.